as well as continuing to, to look for vulnerable populations that maybe did not decide to take the vaccine in the first part, they have some hesitancy issues, or they just weren't in uh, the group that got the vaccine and were gonna get it. So that's something we're gonna focus on. Um, give you an idea of what this week looks like for the health department. Tomorrow we're working on KU, RHPC, and Atlas Indians. Uh, this past week reminded us again of why those people are needed mm -hmm. for all of us. It's an understatement. Uh, so we're gonna get uh, as many of them wanted it. Uh, we're doing that tomorrow. And then on Thursday, the commissioner asked us, uh, or asked Bull County also to pick up some more of the North Point staff. So we're gonna pick them up uh, Thursday afternoon. And then Friday is gonna be a great day. We're gonna start about 6.30 that morning on the second round for all the school teachers and the school employees. And by 3.34 that day, we will have completed Boyle, Danville, um, Boyle, Danville, and DCA, and then we'll finish off KSD in about the week following that. So for the school system, they're now at that point where they have that, so they will have that second dose and that will help them, hopefully as they return back in person. In, uh, or in person full time. I know they're already working on some plans like that. To give you an idea on our numbers for Boyle County, uh, the last seven days we have had 31 total cases, and I would have taken 31 total cases for most of this past year over a seven day period. Because as you know, you know, if you look at the period between the end of October to about the middle of January, 31 would have been one day on some of in some days I would consider that a really good day. Uh, a couple of factors for that. A couple of factors for that. Obviously I think the weather last week played a little bit of <laughs> it just did. I think fewer people were out, fewer people were in uh, close proximity to each other. And uh, hopefully also the vaccines are really starting to play their part. And so as that continues on, hopefully we can see more of these days. Our incident rate I actually looked at the map today and it was the lowest I remember and I think it was 14 or 16 or something. And at one point we were what, 146, I think on the, so we were the top of the state. So I think that's a huge, uh, obviously a huge improvement for us and hopefully that continues. Now, my, and this is Brent's two cents on what might happen with our cases. You know, the warm, the weather's a little warmer People are going to be out, you know, businesses are back open. I would expect that maybe they'll be bumping those cases again, even with the vaccines going. I think it just seems a little natural that that'll happen, but hopefully nowhere close to where we were before. That's our goal, obviously. So um, that gives you an idea of what we're looking at. Um, as of today, we have 3,100, well, this was as of yesterday, 3,120 cases and deaths that are verified or 54. And I know the state website is still behind on the deaths. It's forever gonna be behind. I think that's just what it is. But that's 54 that have been sent up to the state that have been verified they were COVID, or that was the main factor in it. Um, a couple of things I'll throw out real quick that I think is real telling for Kentucky and, and uh, Boyle County. If you look at Kentucky, we were ranked, what, 48th or 49th worst in the nation already for our overall physical health. And uh, I hope, because if you look at a lot of the deaths and a lot of the things that happened with COVID, a lot of the people that really struggled with this had some other comorbidity stuff going on. And mm -hmm. any of us, that can strike any of us at any time. I'm not saying that. But I hope in Kentucky, it gives us an awareness and an awakening to the more energy we can put in to making ourselves and our communities as healthy as can be. When things like a pandemic roll around, that can directly uh, be related to those issues we already had, it can help us greatly. I mean, I, that from the health department standpoint, <coughs> when we get to that point, we're gonna try our best to really put that message out because it truly makes a difference. Uh, there, you can look at the data, you can look at the deaths we've had, you can look at the cases and it, there's no doubt about it. It's a direct correlation on that, so, okay, that's, that's COVID and vaccine. Any questions or? I had a question yeah. that may or may not be your department. Sure. Um, during the ice storm, I had a few people contact me about warming areas mm -hmm. 
And is that something they contact the health department about or more the Salvation Army? That goes through, actually that goes through EM, emergency management, EM, okay. and just how that works. And I'll, I can play out a little history for that. In the last 10 years or so, probably eight of those years, we opened warming centers or shelters mm -hmm. uh, during, during different weather related things and nobody would show up. I think one year we had one or two people show up and that was it. And it would be below zero outside. So what we started doing was, is uh, as that's routed through EM and it goes through, I know it ends up going through police and dispatch and all those, try to filter that down to EM and let Mike Wilder, who does a tremendous job with that, really you know, say, hey, do we need to open the shelter now or not? The backstory behind that is even when we're deciding that, uh, and we were very fortunate to have a lady named Katrina Weathers. I don't know if you know her, but she's, she is wonderful to do this for us. But every year, in this whole past week, she spent the night out at her church out at Centenary. And uh, Centenary's been awesome with this, too. And as soon as Mike calls, she opens the doors. Uh, I get people from what's called the Medical Review Corps. I have them on standby to go out and help man that because we won't have one person by themselves at any time. And uh, we stand it up that way is how that plays out. So most of that, from my understanding, is it filters down through EM and uh, you know, hopefully it all gets to them and then we know how to open from there. All right, now here's Brent's wish list in the future. <laughs> and this is, this will, we'll see where this one ever goes. I think at some point, you know, if the county and the city ever, and not that you guys don't look at this, I know you do and think about it, but if we could ever have the joint ability to have an agency who is supported financially, and we're not talking hundreds of thousands, just very minimal amounts of money that if a shelter needs to open, that they would be trained and ready to open no matter what the need would. Uh, because even the way we stand them up now, using MRC volunteers, and volunteers are great. Our MRC group is great, no problem with them. But it's good to have some people who that's their designated responsibility all the time. It just makes it so much easier. Because there's so much that goes with a shelter you know, if you're going to serve food, then you get into environmental issues, and uh, you also have to make sure the site can handle the uh, the sewer side of it. There's a lot of things that go with it. So, all right, that was Brent's two cents. That was my moment to throw it out. Well, I, I was going to ask you if you could maybe write that down and yeah. give sort of your outline of of what you see that being and what maybe you think that might cost. I, I sounds like a good idea. Yeah, now. I'll be glad to. I appreciate and and. And as we get on down the road with it, which I, I would think we w could do that, um, are you in a position to train these folks? I do, I do have the ability to probably do some training, yes. Uh, the one piece, the way the ESFs are written now is the health department is responsible to stand up the medical part of a shelter if it opens. So if somebody comes in and they're on oxygen or something like that and they need medical care, then the health department stands in to do that. So by the nature of that, we already do some training on how to set up a shelter and how to run a shelter. So yes, I would be more than happy to assist with that. Okay. Uh, going back to the uh, COVID issue, uh, is there any way we can get our water workers and wastewater workers vaccinated? We have we have we already done that? They've done their second. They've already done their seconds, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. So they're done. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. good. What, I wasn't what, sure where they were. And, uh, um, what it had, or when do you see, I guess is the question I want to ask, um, everybody being vaccinated who wants it? I think two things. I think the Johnson & Johnson, once it's approved, is the game changer. I mean, the Pfizer and the Moderna have been great. They've served their purpose. But when you get down to where it's one shot, it's one time, you go through and get it and you're done, I think that's the game changer. Now. I think uh, at the beginning of March that the governor has stated that 1C will be open. And in my opinion, once 1C opens up, I mean, we already do some 1C. If, we're, if we need to give some doses, we can draw out a 1C, no problem. But when that officially opens up, because you're looking at anybody that is considered essential, I mean, that can be people working at a store. I mean, it just opens it up to so much. And I think once that happens is when it really starts opening up. Now, when do health
healthy 35 year olds, you know, jump in there. I'm, I kind of think that's going to be a couple of months, month and a half, couple of months, as long as the Johnson and Johnson mm -hmm. is approved. And that's, you know, the, the vaccines we have now are obviously very effective, which is great. But I can tell you after doing over 2000 of these doses, having to figure out how to get people back in for the second round and work mm -hmm. on schedules. Uh, and I know, you know, Ephraim is really good at what they do, but it's a struggle to make that work. And then to make sure you're not a day or two early, but you're not too far after. And it's logistically, it's very difficult. Yeah, and sure then the third piece of that, once the pharmacies get it full time, the doctor's offices, where's, that's where most people get their shots anyway. Uh, normally, mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter if it's flu or what it is then I think it'll become just routine for the people that want it. Yeah. So you guys are not really, just for clarity's sake, you guys are not really vaccinating the general public. They need to go through Ephraim McDowell now we to do, do I that, wish everybody correct? I can through Ephraim. Okay. And that's an individual now because I'm still focusing on agencies. You know, if you look at everybody we're doing this week, uh, those are agency type. Right. Uh, people that we're still trying to pick up. Um, you know, the truth is I probably should have picked up KU and RECC and Atmos a long time ago, and we just didn't get them. So we're gonna try to pick them up now, but yeah. And I also, uh, the last post I did, I think I counted and there was seven or eight different links I had on there that people could go on my post at the health department and actually click on a link and register somewhere for a dose. And, and try to get in that way. So it's becoming it's becoming a lot more. A lot more people are getting in. Thank goodness. The uh, Johnson Johnson, I understand, is not does not have the same efficiency uh, or effective rate as the uh, Pfizer. I think initially yes, um, and then the way I understood that the last I read about that is over time that if that effectiveness increases with that one. But yes, I think initially is it, that, is, that is correct. I think it's been pretty amazing that the Moderna and the Pfizer have both been in the middle of 90% for effectiveness. To me, that's almost a miracle uh, that it's, it, it happened that way. And if it continues that way, and you know, Johnson & Johnson, if they start out, and I'm guessing, let's say they start out in the 80s somewhere, but it ends up after 28 or 35 days or whatever it is, that, that you're, um, it's up in the 90s. I think that's amazing too. Now that's just Brent's two cents on the end of that. <laughs> Any further comments or questions? I just want to tell him thanks for <clears throat> the work that you're doing and for the this consistent updates that we're receiving now. That's been helpful. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys. It's, uh, it's, I've, I've said this before, we're blessed to be in a community where People help. I mean, I've called people in this room and said, "Hey, I need something right now," and I've gotten it just like that. And uh, you know, a lot. There's some communities that don't have that. We're we're fortunate, very fortunate. So thank you, guys. We thank you. Appreciate thank you. It, Thanks. Item two is the uh, presentation of the downtown master plan with the gentleman who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Jim Walters. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's really my pleasure to be here, and thank you for allowing me to lead the pledge. Enjoyed that. Um, as you know, we, uh, last time we met on the master plan, we had a um, workshop, and we went through in pretty good detail and uh, Jenny, I don't think you were. I, I watched it a few times and then got the notes. Okay, <laughs> so good. Um, but uh, what uh, what we've done here is, uh, and it's been reformatted, but the information is essentially the same as was on all the slides that you looked at. And so I am um, bringing to you tonight this booklet, which incorporates the the master plan in a format that hopefully is easy to understand and, and read and. Um, and uh, giving that to you as a, a kind of a final report, uh, executive summary report on my behalf. Um, I would like to take a few minutes because in the putting this 
together um, and in continuing to flesh out some of the ideas, I, um, there are a few, there are three or four or five things near the end of it that were either not included in what we met on before or have changed a little bit. And I'd like to just, in being transparent and letting you all have an opportunity to ask me any questions about these things that you haven't seen before necessarily, I'd like to run through that on the screen and click on the left. So one of the, uh, what you're looking at here is, um, you, yeah, you saw like. before, uh, The, um, on, the, on the lower left-hand corner, that's the corner of Main and uh, 4th Street and uh, Walnut Street is the next one over. And why I'm showing you this is uh, not to go over the core block, which has the hotel and the, uh, you know, this is just one of the four plans that I showed you about ways we could do that with the parking garage and the hotel and so forth. But to show you in the next part of that block, what could happen if we extended Church Street one more block from where it now, go, it now goes from Main to Walnut? And so we're kind of recommending that we consider taking it on to uh, all the way to uh, Martin, Luther Th Martin Luther King. So that would give us the opportunity, and all those yellow buildings would be new buildings. It could be apartment, apartment and street level retail type type buildings or townhouses uh, along Church Street and it really would uh, go a long way to, to change that whole, the Walnut Street quarter that we're all interested in. So I wanted to point that out since we hadn't talked about that in any detail and this was kind of a new graphic. Uh, then the uh, next idea that we talked about before but I just wanted to kind of put it in context was that the idea that Church Street could then be extended from Martin Luther King all the way down to Russell, is it? I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant. Uh, Grant and then, and then Russell. And uh, that that whole red area, even though it's now uh, single family uh, lots, uh, very small houses on very huge lots, that uh, possibly over time uh, we could encourage a lot more uh, a denser, denser residential development in that area to get more people uh, living close into the downtown. And uh, we did talk about the uh, Kentucky School for the Des District uh, planned unit development concept. Uh, here are a few ideas about that, and you've <coughs> seen this graphic before, but I kind of wanted to bring it up because the, the item called C up at the top is this idea for a second street park on uh, a portion of what is now the KSD property. So these things are, are not new ideas, but the idea with this planned unit development is that over time that property is going to change and it's going to get nibbled away at uh, as, as KSD uh, decides they will surplus or the state decides for them that they'll surplus some land or whatever. And we just want to make sure that, that it's done in a thoughtful way that supports uh, good zoning and good, good land use and, and values. And so the idea is that you get all the stakeholders that have something to do with, uh, with that property, including the city and the county, and, and everybody kind of agree on a plan that, that, uh, that they would, move, that they would uh, respect moving forward so that as uh, other properties might become available for development or whatever that they be done in a way that's consistent uh, you know, with, with uh, keeping that uh, entrance to that second street uh, in, in good shape. And this is uh, just a very uh, rough sketch of uh, uh, what that new downtown uh, park could be, with second street park. Uh, it would have a, a, the multi-use trailhead is uh, item D there that uh, would be a place where you could uh, you could connect with all the trails going south and all the trails going north and east and west from that point with plenty of parking so people could come from out of town and uh, get get their bikes off the cars and go over to D and go to the restroom and uh, get a bottle of water and and look at the maps and take off and have a fun day and uh, 
Uh, a would be the p idea of a, uh, maybe a new picnic pavilion uh, that could be used for gatherings and meetings and events and could be used by KSD for, uh, for outdoor classrooms or events that they might have. And, uh, and maybe a dog park because uh, the idea of this would be a, a downtown residential person's park and you know place to go to, uh, walk to, and um, uh, walk your dog and take the dog to the dog park. And C is kind of an, uh, uh, bringing in the idea of uh, the uh, reactivate. Uh, there's a black history experience, um, which is called reanimate, that was, uh, has been the idea that has come together over the past several weeks. And they put in for a, a, a grant to try to do some uh, interpretive and uh, experiential displays. And so something mm -hmm. like that, because of its close association with Second Street, and the historical uh, black uh, business community uh, might, might be a nice uh, theme and, and another addition to this, this park. So that's shown on here as well. And these are just some images of that existing area, which is very park-like uh, right now. We'd like to just preserve that and I can say add a few uh, buildings like a trailhead there in the center and uh, a pavilion, the picnic pavilion or whatever. Uh, this is all old business here. You've seen this. This is the Entertainment Destination Center, uh, the, 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 um, the five zones that um, uh, can be licensed for uh, alcoholic beverage uh, use. And um, these are, at the end, kind of a few overall initiatives that don't have any particular plan to follow, but are just things that uh, the master plan would encourage. And, of course, enhancements of the tree canopy and uh, tree tree cover, and uh, get in some of these asphalt parking lots, and uh, uh, adding some uh, tree, street trees, and any any place that we can find uh, other cities, uh, you know, like schoolyards and things like that, where the more trees are being planted, and any kind of public space that you have to add to that tree canopy. And then we thought that uh, another. Uh, idea that came out in several of our discussions with local folks and we didn't get mention it much before was to somehow uh, somehow really celebrate Stephen Roth Powell's um, relationship to the city and to center and to maybe make that kind of a theme uh, that that we amplify and and possibly as we move forward with a town center or a hotel or, or whatever that, that maybe maybe you know you can't really afford to create this huge collection but you could have, uh, you could sponsor a lot of uh, rotating uh, special exhibitions where you borrow pieces for a display and then maybe find ways to uh, demonstrate uh, that glass in other ways by photography or uh, materials and colors and, and, and other glass uh, artists that are now working uh, in, uh, in the area and a way to sort of uh, expose them and express the character of this local glass art is something that, that was, uh, is respected a lot by people outside of Danville and, and people understand who Stephen Powell was and so is, if there's a way to make, uh, make, make that a part of the community fabric a little bit more would be great. Uh, this is uh, uh, showing the, the existing Danville Boa Pathways Trail Plan and the idea is to, is to for tourism and for just your own citizenry, to, uh, you know, the, as, as we've discovered in our research, that the the most uh, uh, popular outdoor recreational activity is walking and biking, and uh, so uh, the the more that we can uh, create a, a kind of a regional jumping off point in that in some place in the in the central city, like like that park, or some place we can get the parking and 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 bike racks and all those things that make it a, a good place to jump off from um, and then have it connect with all the trails that are that are that are either in place or aspirational here on this map and then I've added a few of the, of the kind of purplish blue connections that would create a few more loops so that some of these trail experiences could be loops instead of dead ends uh, and just something to consider as we go forward and I think that um, the I think the value to uh, not only the city and to the center uh, campus students, but also uh, a lot of uh, folks of all ages, whether they be young folks with families or, or um, uh, people like, like uh, me and Jim Atkins, they're up in the uh, other end of the spectrum that uh, we can uh, 
uh, we can all make use of it in one way or another. And uh, we have great potential, and it does cost money to do it, but I think it, uh, there is uh, and a lot of these things, if there's anything I could encourage, would be look at them as, as if you were a business and what the investment, get, what the return on that investment is. If there is, uh, you know, not only for quality of life, but if there are other, you know, if you can get, make some tourism inroads into this, I mean, people uh, do travel to do this every weekend. I know people who do that and go to Loveland, Ohio, and all these places to ride the trails. So um, it's not an unheard of thing, and you've got the distillery out there. I don't know, it just seems like you're set up for a uh, beautiful countryside, and, and um, something more could be made of it if we, if we got our heads together on that. And um, the other thing to, is that the trails, and whenever possible, to separate the, uh, from the vehicles, to not, not have it just be a painted lane on the um, pavement, but to have it be actually separate. That's, that's the safest for everybody, and if it's not that way, then you really do kind of, you know, some, a family with, with three little kids on, on little bicycles and, a, and two parents are not going to take that group on a, on a roadway. And then this idea of, of the Black History Project, which uh, is, is a, a really interesting and, uh, and um, great idea, and it is, uh, they've named it Reanimate, and um, I know that uh, Gresham Smith has uh, put, put this together as far as a, uh, a, a grant application for funds for that, for that. Uh, and I can't speak to the details of that other than uh, I thought that, uh, here again, uh, this envisions kind of Second Street between Maine and Martin Luther King and then uh, uh, being, being this kind of display uh, and exhibit area and then uh, I, I see that uh, spilling out into that new park. If you do that new park, that could, that could be part of the theme for that. So uh, bringing back some of the stories that are part of the fabric of, the, of Danville and um, uh, it, it's something that uh, a lot of people here have been working on and, and uh, uh, I just bring it to your attention. And then um, we talked before, this is not new business, but I really encourage you to move ahead with the downtown uh, uh, rotating loan fund and other kind of ta uh, tax deferral uh, ideas on, on f to encourage development so that we can get uh, we can get some of these uh, historic buildings uh, uh, more efficiently and, and more extensively utilized and space utilized and create some new construction and uh, and help us uh, get that core project uh, underway. Uh, so we thank you for all those people that worked on the coordinating committee uh, listed here and I thank you all for being so wonderful to work with and helpful and uh, I got to talk to personally with uh, about 56 or 57 different people in the interview process and different uh, groups uh, that had different interests in the downtown and uh, it's a great place and I enjoy coming here and uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure so I turn over my report and uh, hope you like it are there any questions or much. comments for Mr. Walters? I don't, the first thing that jumps out at me is how <coughs> comprehensive it is, and I guess that speaks to the number of people who are involved in coming up with it. So uh, I like I like the ideas. I would uh, I know it seems that um, down down mess plan. Okay, you don't you don't need action tonight. Sorry. Well, if you know, we we don't necessarily want to force you to take action. We're not like trying to put pressure on you, but but we do need to to accept the document at some point by motion as a final document. Mm -hmm. So that number one, we can conclude their contract. We can conclude their work. We believe the document doesn't have anything else that needs to be added, but so that we have something that's a completed document. But we are going to continue to work on it for a long time, and we will have. Uh, probably another discussion on the matter during the budget process as staff we don't know necessarily uh that that jim would be here but certainly right. uh but but yeah we do need the document accepted as final you all can do that tonight we'd probably ask you to do that if unless yeah, you're I, i'd like to clarify sure. too we're not asked we're asking you to, to accept the document and, and and approve the document you're not necessarily buying into everything 
that's in there. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, this yes, is sir. A, Thank you for a that. A basket of many ideas, and some, uh, you know, as the mayor has said, you know, it's it's it's, part, it's kind of a priorities game. Where do you start? Right. Where do you where do you put your efforts and your money? And so, uh, we're not trying to sort out all that and make you say, oh my God, yeah, I'm agreeing to this park. Or you're not agreeing to anything, but you are agreeing to accept this as. As your Absolutely. community's product uh, of what okay. uh, ideas they have for reinventing your downtown. Well, I appreciate that clarification. That's <clears throat> yeah, that was well, well stated. Yeah. If anyone, uh, if anyone desires, chair will accept a motion, if you so choose. Well, I will make a motion uh, to accept the document as presented. Second, Mr. Cottle. Thank you, Mr. Terry. We are in discussion, Mr. Atkins. Oh, I'm sorry. I just reached for my microphone. To take <laughs> that's that's yeah. I, I well, anticipated. Well, the, the, the key is that this is just a this, this is just an overview for plan, and the finite details come when we have grants and monies and people that it, people willing to invest in to accomplish some of these goals. So I'm okay. Yeah. Any further comments? Is this going to be available to the public? That's one of the things we'll, we will be able to do once, once it's final, we'll, we'll put it up on the website and, okay, and we'll, good. yes, we'll, it will be publishable. And, and so, yes, it would be then easier to spread it out. How do we, how do we build a, a how do we build a coalition behind this? How do we disseminate uh, the knowledge in this plan? So that we, it's not just us, it's, it's a lot of other groups, a lot of other people to share a vision. Staff will need to coordinate an effort around communicating outwardly some of the ideas, some of the strategic ideas. We'll talk about it again during the budget process where, we, you know, I could en envision parts of the plan needing uh, a short-term task force type effort, for example, the banking. So if we get into a revolving loan fund scenario, then we'll need to assemble a group of people to help think about that. And then ultimately we'll need to get uh, banks on board to help con contribute where's the money come from, you know, uh, for those types of things. So there'll be a lot of lifting to do and we, we will have to start that process once the document's complete, yeah. Huh? I think too that um, you and the commissioners have a, have a role in, in helping answer that, that, mm -hmm. that question because uh, uh, we need the, you know, the leadership and uh, nothing like this ever gets done without a lot of sort of volunteer effort too. And so how do we mobilize people to get interested and step up and put in the time and energy and their expertise in certain areas to help do this? I have found uh, more enthusiasm than usual for a lot of things in the, in the plan when we talk about it to people. And so I think, um, I mean, I just think there, there, there are a couple of very popular things. You know, the Walnut Street re, reinventing is Everybody likes that. I haven't had anybody say that's not worth doing. So, uh, I I would ask you all who are, you know, well connected in the community and know know how to put these things together. I mean, it, it, it's a uh, we need mobilization. You know, we need uh, and so it's it's. I, I don't want to speak against staff having a role, but I think, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the elected officials can can help lead this and show and show their their uh, enthusiasm for it and 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 put the muscle on some people to, to get <laughs> get involved you know so the only comment i was going to make my last comment actually uh was i remember when we did this for the parks back 20 something years ago and that's and then when we tried to redo it, everybody said, well, you've got a master plan, you never finished. Well, it's 20 years old and you know, you can't do it all at once. And so I'm sure that through the course of getting a lot of this done, it'll probably be tweaked and changed. And so this is just the current outline of, of the best ideas we have, so. It's a good idea, it's a, it's a strategic plan. It's, a, it's got elements to all, all those, uh, any way you wanna characterize it, mm -hmm. yeah. I think, it's, I think it's appropriate for the public to know at this time how much cooperation you've already received in some of your conversations with property owners. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that, I think that's very powerful. That speaks, that says something. Would, would it be appropriate to ask that uh, 
coordinating committee to get together, do some brainstorming about how to roll out this, because that involves staff and community folks. That's a, that's a good idea. We could would be happy to do that. That's that's a good a good approach. They got a lot of time. Yep, in. absolutely. And can we enlist Mr. Walters and his firm to continue to work with us to help us implement this? Good keep me away, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we would, well, well, we would like to keep you. So. I, I, I keep trying. Mike, Mike wants me to move down here. I, I, I do my best. I keep trying to get him. I know. Down here. We we will we keep can just you. Have him arrested. <laughs> That's a classic uh, Mayberry move right yeah, there. Right there. <laughs> Are you calling him Barney? I don't know. I didn't say that. Um, well, I'd be happy to, to, to help. And I'm, I'm essentially pretty much retired, so I have some flexibility. I don't have to get paid for every minute that I spend on it, but uh, we can work out something that's fair on, on both sides. I think. Yeah. Well, I'd like well, to stay a part of it. Free so. food and free golf, right? We, 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 cer we certainly want you to. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and, and there's all kinds of things that, that Jim can add. And we, you know, he, he today, we're, we, you know, we were talking about, we, you know, we had the one meeting at, at Plank where we had someone from outside come in and speak and, and talk to us. And certainly he's got some other ideas that we would love to, to draw from on, yeah. on how to continue to engage um, the, the, the community in a similar fashion. I know several of you went to that, that meeting at Plank, yeah. and I thought it was very well, well the mis you know, I thought that uh, Mr. Straub did a great job of explaining, and I've asked him to come back uh, and, yeah, and, please. and do a, uh, and give us a kind of a how-to, you know, uh, start, and maybe some people that he might know that could do some consulting, but um, uh, I thought there were some other topics that we could maybe do that same, uh, same thing on, and people that I, I know that could Maybe I could bring in here and do little TED talks every month or so for a while, and um, and that'd be uh, cool. Yeah. And then I think another thing we could do is have maybe this summer we could have a little symposium or something when the COVID thing is under under control, and and invite potential developers from here or from out of town to come in, and we could maybe have some of this stuff put together, like the loan fund and so on, and we could present our ideas that we want them to consider being part of and what kind of tax deals we got and what kind of and see and just have a I mean I'd be happy to help you organize something like that I don't know we just have to do some things like that what um, Mr. Walters when you did this I know it wasn't really part of the scope um, but in your mind do you have a couple of things that you think we need to do first to kind of be the genesis of the rest of it growing or is that something we need to ferret out as we go or how do you see that? I would hate to be the one. I mean, I think that's, I'd like to do that with, with you, but I think this part about synergy, I do want to keep coming back to that, and this is from a whole lifetime experience with the community endeavors, is that, that you can't just pick one or two things out and say, let's try doing these things and seeing what happens, because it doesn't get you, it doesn't, there's not enough of that, of the whole to, like, you know, if you're trying to get, if somebody's thinking about putting in a restaurant, or they're gonna, they want to know what else, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be the lone ranger down here. Mm -hmm. I don't want I, I want to know that they're going to have some more housing, that they're going to, you know, I want right. to see. In fact, how we got into this was somebody that you had approached about maybe doing a hotel said, well, I look at it, if you show me your master plan and what, what you're going to do with your downtown. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of, you know, people, if you're going to take risk, you want to know who else is going to be taking risk with sure. you. So yeah. that's, that's the, that's the part you can't really avoid. So this does require money. And, um, but you know, you have access to money and um, you can't think of it as uh, spending it. You have to think of it as, as investing it. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are just like a business. You, you know, I, I'm not just building a building, I am investing so I can have a product or I can have a service or I can have, you know, I can, I can, make, an, I can make a living. And so that's how we got to think about. So some of these things that, where there is a return, that's more immediate, might be more attractive as early, mm -hmm. early things. But there's some infrastructure like the street work and so forth. That's clearly city and state business, right. you know, things like that. But the idea of public-private financing is 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 something that we need to get used to. Yeah. We need to get where we understand it and. I'm not talking about just us as a commission. I'm talking about our bankers and, and other influential folks in the community that, that deal in this area. We need to get to where they're comfortable with it. 
Um, the entire I, community. W huh? The entire community. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't finance it ourselves. Um, it, it's going to take some, some private funds in here in partnership with the city to make that happen. I think, too, that you know, getting, getting some of your uh, corporate citizens and business citizens to step forward in, in bigger ways to, for example, these downtown housing funds, um, the one that I'm most familiar with in Louisville that you heard about when Charles was here, uh, you know, that, that the city put some money into that, but a lot of it came from the Brown Foremans and Humanas and those, those companies that took mm -hmm. and bought a $250,000 share or whatever and put that money in, and they weren't giving it away forever, but they were helping uh, prime the, the pump for this, this fund. So it, you, you can't just, the city can't be the only one uh, doing this. And, uh, and then philanthropy is another, uh, another area where most big projects anymore have the, have the three Ps, the public, private, and philanthropic. And you get grants and, and mm -hmm. foundations and wealthy individuals to, to donate for like this park or whatever. That would be a, 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 you know, something that you could maybe take that tack on. But um, it, you aren't going to, you can't just do it with taxpayer money, for sure. You've got to find ways to leverage that as you would know how to do in a financial arrangement where you're, you're trying to take and you're trying to put money in it, but you're trying to get do that to get other money put in and other things to, to happen. So. Would the commission be open to, say, a monthly workshop meeting for us to discuss? I know we just got our budget scheduled, which it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but... Um, in tandem, in tandem with our budget planning, I think this is a key piece, and I don't want it to go on a shelf somewhere and not not be discussed and to stay on top of it. So, is anybody open to that? Well, I, I, and I think another right. alternative to that is that we, we've got these meetings scheduled to deal with budget things and. If we set a time limit to an hour, two hours, or three hours, then we could have a follow-up after lunch. Some of this kind, same kind of stuff. It just ties up for longer periods of time on the same day to where we know we're going to talk about budget for a certain period of time. Then we're going to do a training on the downtown master plan. Uh, yeah, I'm open to that. Something like that. The we can talk further about it. Yeah. I'd like okay. to see the public have access to it yes. whether it's yes. by youtube yes. or video or, yes. or uh, well I, I and i'm still looking forward to in-person meetings you know where we get back to yeah. have people throw things at us from the audience or something. <laughs> <laughs> any further uh, discussion here i think it looks good myself yeah. i can see the changes the improvements from last time well we've needed this for a long time yeah. we've needed some real serious yeah. planning for a long time uh, if there's no further questions or comments, Ch Chair, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Pose like sign. Motion carries. Do not move, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I was going to get my pen. <laughs> now, I want you to understand this is 24 karat gold, <laughs> and it's got cloison A in the middle. Nice. <laughs> You know we're too cheap around here to do that. It's up to it's worth from anywhere from a dollar to dollar twenty five. I bet you anywhere. That's for that's for a dozen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, yes, Thank you Jim. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Denise. Be careful. Thank Have you. a safe drive home. Jenny, I hope to get to see you more. Looking forward to it. Take care. Bye, see you later. <clears throat> I would gladly make a motion to approve Rick Cirrus as the, this is a joint appointment, correct? Correct. 
the joint appointment uh, with the county for um, a term that will expire on 3-1-2024. Is there a second to that? Second. Thank you, Mr. Cottle. Discussion? Call for the question. Second call. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. I should have told Rick I did not vote against him. <laughs> you now I am forward the approval of the minutes of the uh, previous <coughs> two meetings, both occurring on February the 8th of this year. So moved, approve the minutes of both of the February 8th meetings. I have a motion to approve both minutes. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Any discussion, corrections, additions? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those like time. Motion carries. Item five is the uh, quarterly update from our HR administrator, oh, Mr. Man. Randy Boyd. He gets three minutes, is it? Yeah, 45 seconds. 45, <laughs> I only need 30 seconds. <laughs> good. All right, well, good evening, everybody. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be able to present to you. So what I've got here is a first quarter report for really the HR department. Um, and I'll go through some of the line items here. Um, as we all know, 2020 has been a, was a challenging year, but it also presented some good opportunities. I think we had some really positive things come out of the year. And, and with that said, looking at the last year, we have a, uh, a lot of good things on the horizon that we want to share with you, but also some of the things that we need to focus on to, you know, to do continuous improvement. Um, I'm not sure if this thing's. You know where the slide is on this one? Oh, I forgot it. Okay, there we go. All right. So just real quick, these are um, just some of our goals and objectives for the department for 2021. Um, of course, there's other things on here, but we've got really, these are some of our most high level items. As we all know, we, you know, we've talked quite a bit extensively about the Marcus study. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, we're currently in the process of working on. We hope to have um, Target have that completed by April, possibly end of March, just depends on um, some of the things that we look at, but that is in the process. And that is, um, you know, it's really important for us as we've talked about, you know, continuously getting market competitive with our salaries. I think this is going to be a big step in the right direction. And it's something that's taken a considerable amount of time along with everything that we did prior to uh, back in December with the uh, adjustments that we made with the experience scale. Of course, along with that is our healthcare cost containment strategies. Um, you know, healthcare is a is a challenge. You no, know, you know, it is something that, unfortunately, it doesn't get less expensive. It's something that's uh, continuing to rise. Those healthcare costs. Uh, myself and the city manager have been working with our broker on some strategies and things that we're will be presenting in the next few few weeks uh, as we go through. Because our as our plan will renew May one, but we'll have to have decisions made by March on the, on our plans going forward. Um, some other things is obviously um, items three and five, they tie together, which is implementing our HR technology. Um, we know that we've signed on with Cassell, but there's some additional things that we think we can look at with uh, streamlining our process procedures. Um, what that will do is will increase the city's compliance as well as streamline efficiency and accuracy on a lot of different fronts. Um, another item, and this is something really that should be looked at annualized is always doing a policy and procedures handbook review. Um, it's not to say that our policies are bad or anything in nature, it's just a continuous review to make sure those policies fit the needs of the city, they fit the needs of the, the workforce, and also that they stay compliant as well. So I hope that we'll be able to, um, our, our goal there is to really start looking at that on the second quarter of the year. And then of course, safe, a safety, robust safety training program, which is something that I'll talk about here a little bit that we're working on. So we talked about the market analysis. Um, this obviously is a big, big thing that we've all discussed in the last recent few months. As I mentioned earlier, this market analysis is currently underway. We've done preliminary numbers that we're putting together. Um, I've shared those with the city manager and we're in the process of trying to identify 
some different plans on how to get us market competitive. So in the coming months, we'll be presenting um, a couple of different uh, plan uh, outlines during the budget process on how we think we can possibly uh, make these changes happen. Um, it is a significant change. It is a significant um, adjustment that the city will have to be looked at. But, and so we're going to be presenting all the information so we can make a solid, good, informed decision on what's the best course for the overall health of the city. And along with that, it will be presenting some things with compensation policy changes um, and also revisions to our, company, our city's pay classification structure. Those all tie together, and so we're looking forward to bringing that to the table for the commission to look at. Um, and as I mentioned, it is a pretty complex analysis that we're going through, but we're excited to, to bring that to the table because I think it'll be something that's well, you know, well benefited to the city as an organization. Okay, now healthcare update, and I'm gonna show some numbers with you. Um, last year, we had budgeted $2.7 million uh, for our overall healthcare cost. Through January, um, we, our total cost was $1.8 million. So now, as we know, healthcare can, where we are self-insured plan, um, you know, there, there could, we could get unforeseen claim costs that could hit us at any time. You know, but right now we're projected to come in somewhere around 2.5 million. Again, you know, this is a very fluid, um, fluid process, but we're hoping that that's where that number will lie come April the 30th. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have reviews rates from our broker. We actually met with them this past week. We've got some preliminary numbers, but we're still looking at all of our different options. Uh, we will be presenting different cost containment options for review during the renewal process, which this year we will target the first week of April for open enrollment, so all of our decisions will have to be made by the beginning or middle of March for contract renewals. Good thing here is we're only looking at medical this year. Uh, all our ancillary plans, such as dental, vision, life, we, and our disability, we got locked in for a two-year rate guarantee last year, so it'll make our renewals much more streamlined this year because we can focus solely in and on the medical cost. Now, this is just a breakdown, which is expected our cost by plan type. As you can see, you know, the medical makes up 87% of our overall plan cost. Uh, one thing to notice on here is if you look at the yellow line item, 3% of our cost was our HRA program. That is something that won't, and we talked about that during the last plan year, that we grandfathered it in. It was a $63,000 plan that we had that we didn't renew. So that cost will be, will help us as we realign to focus back on our core medical benefits. And that's something that wasn't gonna be renewed for the next plan year. Um, so any questions for, actually before I go on, any questions on the healthcare, I know that's a, a pretty significant number, but like I said, we're, and we anticipated last year when we did the renewals that we would do a two year it was a two-year plan to try to get our costs under control or reduce costs, and so this is year one. And I feel like if we come in close at about the same cost as what we budgeted, I feel like that is a success in year one. So year two is when we'll hopefully see our, our big impacts on, on cost containment. Okay. Um, just re next thing is here, I just want to provide us with just a general recruiting update. Um, these are some of our key positions that we're currently recruiting for. Um, obviously, with the Parks and Rec Director, we, there's been a lot of discussions on that. Um, we have narrowed it down to four finalists. We've actually, the committee has interviewed three of the four. We will be doing our fourth finalist this week. And then the committee is, um, will pass on the three finalists for the final round interviews that will go with the judge, executive, city manager, and myself. And we hopefully now make that decision in March. And all these other positions that we have on the list here, such as the Deputy Fire Chief, U Utility Inspector, those are currently in the recruiting stages of, of vetting applications and reviewing those. And uh, we're also, we've already been working with Parks and Rec staff, I've worked with them pretty closely in the absence of a director to lay out a staffing plan for our seasonal positions. Uh, some people are coming back um, from last year, but we have 66 various positions that we're starting to recruit for now to start filling beginning in March, okay. All right, um, wanted to go ahead as we talk about recruiting, and obviously turnover is something that we, um, is always on any organization's mind. This is just a synopsis 
of what our turnover looked like in 2020. Um, our total city turnover was 18%. Uh, we had 27 total full-time employees, and this is just full-time turnover only. Um, out of that 27, 11 of those were compromised of safety personnel, 10 police, one fire. Uh, we did have six retirees last year. Um, one thing that really stuck out as I put these numbers together is if you look on the next slide here, this is just a breakdown of our turnover by reason. You can see about 50% of it is um, for employees that resign for another position. And I will say that in the majority of those positions, pay was a contributing factor. Um, now, what's, what is really positive out of this is if you look at the green blocks there that says environment, we only have one person re resigned for environment. In an organization, that means our work-life balance, our employee culture, our employee-centric, um, I guess you could say, objectives are in place. And so we have, no one ever really leaves the city because of the environment. And that is a really, and to me, that is a positive positive attribute um, as we go, as we correlate the people leaving for other pay, other jobs for pay, that's something we know that is an opportunity for us to improve upon. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. So that 18%, do we know how that compares with, say, other industries or other companies? We don't, and that's a fantastic question, and that's actually a conversation that myself and city manager had that we are going to try to benchmark to see how we're comparing. Okay. Um, we really haven't benchmarked other cities or other organizations, um, but once we do, that'll give us a better, a better understanding of how we're, you know, really we're how strong or how. Just what even if we had an average. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. Exactly. To compare it to, yeah. Yep. And no, that, that's a great question, and that's something we need. We we always want to benchmark ourselves, and as as we collect this data, I think we'll be have better benchmarks come going forward. Um, so with you know another big thing for us, and this was actually one of the things I think was really strong for us this year was our overall safety. Um, you know I can't give kudos enough to our management team. I've worked with all of our managers how safety conscious they are. We we did have a total of 25 recordables last year. Um, but we only had one one that incurred lost time days, which was really amazing. We had one with 87 lost time days. We did have a, you know, injury frequency was high, but our severity was low. And what I mean by that is we had minor injuries that could have been, you know, report only, did not seek medical treatment, minor accidents throughout the course of their general job duties. Um, our employees are truly safety conscious. No injury was a result of negligence or um, inappropriate behavior. It was just general circumstances that happened within the scope of the job. Um, you know, and our ex expected versus actual losses that can continue to decline against our policy. Uh, right here is a three-year synopsis of what our workers' comp cl incurred claim costs look like. Um, obviously, it looks like in 2018 there were, as I went back and looked at some of our loss run reports, there was a couple of claims that, you know, made that number spike but if you look at the last two years you can see that it's pretty well flatlined and and out of 2020 out of that 51,000 one claim made up 60 percent of that incurred which is our one loss time so uh, which is really a really positive sign it helps us keep our you know keep our policy down and also keep our employees safe which is is the ultimate goal okay um, now, this last part, this is just a, a synopsis. So I went back through and did a SWOT analysis of our overall workforce. And um, as you can look at our strengths, you know, these are some of the things that we really want to key on. Focus on our strengths and opportunities and eliminate our weaknesses and, and understand what our threats are. So our strengths are obviously, you know, stable employment opportunities. We have a great work-life balance. We know our Benefit package is top tier. It really is a benchmark plan against any organization. And we, you know, we have an employee focused workplace culture that we mentioned earlier. You know, a couple of our weaknesses compensation models below market. Uh, we don't have succession planning model in place, but what's positive out of that is we've already identified that those are areas that we know and we're in the process of, of working to improve those weaknesses. Um, you know, some of our opportunities, again, is to make us more market competitive, uh, which we, again, we, you know, we hope to have a plan together by April to 
uh, to rectify some of that. And then, you know, really, we want to market the city as a regional employer of choice. You know, if yes, we have 150 full-time employees, we'll add in parks and rec, and, you know, we can peak at anywhere from 300 employees. That's during, you know, during a peak season. That's a large organization. And I think we want to continue to market ourselves to be the employer for people to want to come to, to work for, whether it's, you know, individuals returning home to the community after they graduate from college and, and want to be invested in the community. And I think that's where succession planning and some of our other models will help us bring people back, uh, the educated workforce back to the community. Um, compensation benefits, when I talk about benefits, we not only talk about health care, we talk about other benefits such as, you know, vacation pay, incentive plans. There's a lot of things that we've got gears are turning in our head right now that we're looking at we think we can really try to work through and i've had a lot of discussions with our management team and our city manager and one of the things that i you know and i go back to this this really is a team effort um you know and i can't give enough kudos to all of our management team to really helping with this because i've had conversations with all of our managers you know brainstorming ideas so it's not just myself city manager it's really the whole management team and the giving us feedback and i think that we're all working as a cohesive unit and to help, you know, bring these things to, to, to the table. And of course, you know, some of our challenges is, and you know, these are, is re increased retirement cost. I mean, we know that those, those rates go up this year in July. Those rates are just, so everyone's aware, those rates are factored into our compensation proposal. I've already put the new rates in. Um, you know, we're looking at a 3% increase for non-hazardous. Um, a five, almost five percent increase for hazardous, and that is a you know a big challenge. Another thing that we've seen is our shrinking labor market. You know, and that's where we go back to talking about marketing the city as a regional employer. Our labor market in this area is only so big, right? And so we've got to position ourselves, as I mentioned, or like a I give the example of a, a recent college graduate that wants to come back home we've got to attract people to come back into this area. And so that is that has been a challenge for us on the recruiting front this year, but it's something, again, the, the positive is that we've identified that and we're trying to work on things to, to combat those challenges. So when you say market, is that like a real marketing plan? Well, when I say <laughs> market, it's, it's like the, the available, what's the workforce, the labor pool that's in the market that's available or seeking employment in this area? Right, but when you say market, oh yeah, market as a regional city. employer, is that like a real marketing plan that we're that's going to be professional and yes, and, uh, and a and a multitude of you know billboards, internet, whatever. Yeah, I, and that's something that's we we still got to put our thinking caps on. Yes, it could be things like you know educating, going out to the school systems, educating them about municipality, <coughs> excuse me, career opportunities right, like. Right. You know, a good example is a, a great, and I hate to say, a great hidden career field is utilities, for example. It's a stable field. It's a very good field. People can, you know, in essence, almost write their own ticket once they get their certifications and things. And, but a lot of people don't know those things exist. And so, so yeah, we, we don't know the ins and outs of that, but we know what we need to do. And I think that's really important is, because um, I think, uh, you know, unless you work on the inside of the city, a lot of times you don't. As an employee, you don't realize what what opportunities exist within municipal government. Oh, right. absolutely. And, and even me, even me being here in the last year as your HR director, I've learned a lot of opportunities that I didn't even know existed mm -hmm. within the municipality. So, it, how do you get that external communication out? Right. Is, is right. what we've got to focus on. Okay. Okay. All right. um, but again, you know, and I hope to bring you, you know, bring these reports to the commission quarterly just to kind of keep the pulse on what we're doing within our department and uh, but we will be bringing in the compensation model like i said i have preliminary numbers that we've put together so and a rough draft of the plan i've shared with the city manager so okay. yeah, i'm sitting there looking at all of this and, 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 and the comprehensiveness of it all and then it dawned on me you've been with us a year yep COVID didn't help. Um, I would say for the first five or six months, 
But in polite, lightly, yeah. <laughs> and I think for you to uh, encompass everything that you have here and, and present it to us, I'm, I'm glad you're here, sir. Well, I appreciate it. And like I said, I, you know, it's, I got to give credit to the structure of the management team and everyone here, just how team oriented we are, because you know, I did a lot of time asking a lot of questions, probing a lot of questions out of our managers, and uh, you know they've all very been very receptive to to uh, working towards the same goal. So I think that without that, we wouldn't be able to achieve what we've done up to this point. So if you're long overdue, and I'm glad you got your big arms around. Yes. Well, I appreciate it, and I hope, like I said, my goal is to bring you these reports once a quarter, so that way we can stay up to date on what, what we're working on. Are, are you, uh, one more question, are you also um, looking at risk management as well, or is that someone else's? Um, well, right now that's, and I probably didn't mention my safety slide, we are doing a risk management. I'm actually, when we started this before the Christmas, we we're doing a, uh, I'm working with KLC's loss prevention team, mm -hmm. and so we've done part of, we're doing a safety, a complete citywide safety review, identify any areas that we feel like are, you know, maybe risk exposures, but also areas for improvement, whether it's safety training, equipment operation, general facility structures. We've done about half of that. We probably would have had it already completed, but they wanted to step back with the COVID impacts mm -hmm. that we had in November and December. Um, so what the plan is, is to have a full safety assessment done in the city. I've asked them to put together a report for us so we would look at it. And then what while will be done at that point is sitting down with city manager, sitting down with each department head and looking at those so that so we can mitigate our risk going forward. So yeah, that is that is part of our risk risk analysis, risk prevention that we're currently working on. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is great and, question. And as yeah. always, the active shooter training. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and one thing I didn't mention is I've already worked, you know, unbiased training. I didn't mention that in here. I've already Got some demos from some a vendor that we look at. I'm um, sharing some price codes with, with city manager, so we'll hopefully to have that make movement on that in the first quarter of this year too, depending on what the you know the financial quotes come back with. Okay, no, Great. thank. You. Yeah, this was phenomenal. I enjoyed it thoroughly at home and took lots of notes, <laughs> and I think this is going to get us on our way as a city to be like a top tier employer. Well, so, thank you. well, I appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have a good night. I'll move to approve first reading of ordinance, ordinance 1960 at zero South Danville Bypass. Motion by Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Terry. Discussion? Let her read it. She has to read it. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1960, an ordinance changing the zone from AG Agriculture to HB Highway Business for approximately 3.260 acres, more or less, of real property located at zero South Danville Bypass in the city of Danville. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Commissioner Caudill. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Terry. Yes. Mayor Paris. Yes. Commissioner Holland. Yes. Commissioner Atkins. Yes, ma'am. Item seven, I will recuse myself as I did at the last meeting uh, as I have a conflict of interest here. I'm gonna ask uh, Mayor Pro Tem Yes, sir. And if you'll remind the public mayor of the reason for your conflict, please, per our ethics ordinance. Well, the uh, conflict is as this zone change pertains to my property. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Chair would like to entertain a motion. I move Item. for approval of first reading of ordinance. 1961. Second. Probably moved in second. Madam Clerk. Oh. Try to read this one, do you? 
This is the first reading of ordinance number 1961, an ordinance changing the zone from AG agriculture and R1A single family residential to GB general business for approximately 19.482 acres, more or less of real property located at 2356 Parable Road in the city of Danville. She waits so patiently to read those things. <laughs> uh, discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor of Ordinance 1961, first reading? After roll call. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Commissioner Terry? Yes. Commissioner Holland? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Atkins? Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Commissioner Cottle? Yes. Don't do that. I guess we got to the mayor back. Too, <laughs> We voted it down. Okay. <laughs> I told him I was going to vote no. Deep <laughs> He's probably on the phone. He's uh -huh. in the boys' room. <laughs> Man, you check bounce, so we voted you down. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, first thing I would like to do is acknowledge uh, a business here in the community that that uh, has has uh, contributed in volunteer hours with equipment and time over the over many different emergency events, uh, many different storm events, and and that's Coel Stone. Um, they have uh, supported everything that we've needed as as we've had these major storm events. Sometimes they've picked up snow. They've helped the schools. They've they've went out with their equipment, cleaned corporate drive one time before as an easy example. But in this case, they made the quarry available. They moved stone for us within the quarry so that the utility company, while everything else was shut down, could still get access to material as we, we had a couple of main breaks and we needed needed the stone material. And I just want to acknowledge their presence in the community and thank them for what they do. Very good. Well, and, and to, to, you know, behind the scenes, if you'll think back to 2009, we mm -hmm. leased Coel Stone's property and, and had a uh, debris removal uh, operation there that was extended. Um, while we were, as the city staff, making arrangements in, in all the departments over the weekend um, uh, to, to make sure we had fuel, make sure we had chainsaws, make sure we had schedules for employees, going into Monday night, Sunday night, I'm sorry, anticipating the worst. Um, Sunday evening, I, I had a chance to call uh, young Mr. Albright Clay, and, and he had already done the same thing for their property and acknowledging that, well, we, we need to fix our access. We've changed that since the last time we did it. but And, and we didn't have to call him to have him do that. He knew that uh, that was a situation that, that they could play a role. And, and, it, and it's not a monetary role for them. It's not a huge, it, it's not a monetary benefit for them. It's something that they support the community with and we have to acknowledge that and appreciate that. Yeah, I agree. Six, six years ago, we had those two back-to-back -back snows that put about 15 inches. We did. That's what, I was thinking of that too. Yeah, they had that front end loader out. On the main street. Clearing it off the street to yeah. stack mm -hmm. it up with that. There's no way else to go with it. Right. Yeah, we had two winters in a row five or six years ago, and they helped tremendously, and yep. we appreciate that. And well, they were mobilized and ready this time, and I just don't want to, you know, take not forward. take take this and acknowledge them. I think I think this is a, a forum that they need to hear that. Mm -hmm. yep. I agree. The next thing is uh, we sent out a letter that we had received from a notice of a public hearing Thursday, March fourth at six thirty p.m. Uh, the bluegrass. Uh, community Action Partnership is hosting a um, public forum with Frankfurt Transit, which is a city of Frankfurt arm of their public transportation. And we are going to ask uh, the city engineer to participate with that. In their notice, um, it indicates that the meeting is held with the intent to discuss and work on um, with the public on uh, number two was determining how bluegrass 
transit can better accommodate public transit riders within our local cities served, including Danville and others. Um, some of the other statements that's in the letter is that the um, projects are funded a lot of times with transportation administration dollars with through grant uh, seeking of the grant program. Um, and that they have a coordinated transit and human services transportation plan. And so what we're, we want to participate in that public hearing, we're not asking for your opinion, but we are uh, welcoming those comments as you have them, please uh, distribute to, to us. We sent you the letter. If you would like another copy, cer certainly we'll get you another copy. But uh, um, before March the 4th, and, and like we said, Josh will be hopefully attending that meeting for us. And what if you, was the time of that meeting? It's at 6.30 p.m. It is a Google Meet. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's got a uh, link that we have to observe with. And so we'll, we'll send this back out to you tomorrow, mm -hmm. if Ashley will help me remember. And uh, we'll get this back out to you so it's fresh in your inbox. Um, we don't know a lot about it, but we, we got the letter, and, and you're welcome to read it, and we can brainstorm about it together if you all would like. And sound like we... If we wanted to, we could zoom in and just be an observer, right? That is correct. That was my impression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can watch. We can watch this meeting ourselves. Absolutely. Okay. Right. And that the link is included in the letter yeah. okay. that that was sent I don't out. Remember seeing that. The next item is the budget calendar. We <laughs> attach that to to your desk there. Um, we had some issues with the font on the actual times for the meetings. The meetings are generally uh, at 9 a.m. if it's a, it's a weekday. What we, we did talk about is, for example, on the 22nd of March, we, we are noting a discussion at the commission meeting, and what we would like to do is not wait for special call meetings to talk about it. So I'm, I'm pointing that out to you that, that we may have budget discussion on there to, to uh, as a regular agenda item, take just a little bit of time during this meeting to talk about the things that, that to continue dialogue from, from a previous meeting. Um, the first meeting will be uh, March the 11th, 9 a.m. What we'd like to do is talk about the year end, uh, year to date, some, some of the numbers from last year that, and then as we've gotten into this year, uh, we would like to have a projected year end by then based on some February data that we hope to get this month and also talk about revenue. That will be a presentation uh, primarily the next meeting as an example, will be the March 25th meeting at 9 a.m. also, and that will be, by then, we would hope to have the departments, the department heads come in and expand on the conversation we had at our initial uh, discussion that we had in here a couple weeks ago, where they talk about what they want to do with their departments, and then uh, we'll try to get in the compensation study at that time. The rest of the meetings, I, if you read then, I've tried to provide a comment or two beside all the agenda times. so. So that you'll understand in the same way I described those two, kind of what the subject of the meeting will be as we get into a, having a draft budget, hopefully by the end of April. Um, by the April the 29th, we, we would hope to get a, a full draft a budget assembled, uh, absent the, um, or, or after the community agency presentations the week before. The community agency applications have, will, will go out this week. Uh, the deadline will be the uh, 31st of March for those responses. Um, we did have one optional day to hear the public, the community agency presentations, and uh, that would be the 22nd, but that's that's an optional day. Uh, so we try to be consistent. We try to put everything on Thursday morning except for a retreat that is March 31st. We'll point out 9 a.m. That's where we will uh, begin to get into the, the uh, city commission goals and objectives at length. You'll notice that one is on, uh, and also the Capitol, that's on a Wednesday morning, uh, to just to throw a monkey wrench in there. We can move that to Thursday if you want. But uh, City Hall being closed half day that Friday, we felt like Wednesday would be, uh, would give a little bit of room between the meeting and the end of the week. So on these uh, community agency presentations on April the 20th, um, that's what, four presentations? Well, we intended to, to allow the folks that made application for funding uh, to give them the opportunity to present to you. So, so certainly, if you do not, uh, we at minimum would have the four planning and zoning, the airport boards, the other direct fund joint agencies. Uh, I, thought we, I thought we eliminated uh, the the. This is 
I think we did eliminate most if not all of them but may, I was thinking maybe if it was over a certain dollar or under a certain dollar amount that they didn't come and present or Ashley and I noticed that and and certainly that's a good pickup and certainly something we can entertain if it's if it's under what was it last time do you remember I think it was under 5,000 that's then what there I was, was no I presentation believe. required mm -hmm. the the application stood on its own I'm going to defer to our new commissioner and ask if she would like to hear from all of them. I mean, and that's up to you. Okay. I'd be happy to do it if you want to. Well, I'd at least want to see a list and study all the organizations and research what they are. Um, I've seen some of the presentations, obviously not all of them. Right. Do you think it would be beneficial for me to hear all of them? Don't we see their application? Well, what I was going to suggest, we would have a, the, the deadline for the applications is the 31st. And so the, the commission meeting on the 12th, what we can do is uh, assemble that list for you. That discussion item uh, would be then how you want to proceed with those community agencies. I we mean, can, I'd be comfortable if you gave me enough time to research them with a contact person so I could ask questions. You, and that we, would be. Can you give me a copy of their that? Would be great. Material? We we can uh, assemble a book with each one. Um, the week of the fifth is spring break. Um, or I can do a spreadsheet based off their application. I can pull certain things. Based However on you all want me to do it. Based on when their applications come in on the thirty first, do you think you can have that assembled by the middle of the next week, the seventh, and then yeah. email that out? Yeah. Okay, that's what we'll do, and and I didn't want to you know over obligate the city clerk but if we'll send at least a spreadsheet out on the 7th so and, i'd have a full yeah. almost two weeks yeah okay but that but we can good. talk about whether or not you want to see a presentation from them uh either the 12th or even even at the 15th and we can reschedule that if we if we need to or uh to from the 20th to the 22nd if we hold that day in reserve you know so we can coordinate that as we need to the other piece of that puzzle um, for all the commissioners but particularly Commissioner Holland I think um, do you know when you would have a projected figure that could be available that will be available for allocation so what we would like to do our target was on the 15th of April uh, at that meeting we would like to present a draft operational budget which includes the the capital discussion that that is for that year that's going to leave you with an, a, an, an amount of money that you can um, safely uh, allocate to the community agencies so on the 15th is when we'll talk about um, the amount you want to distribute or the amount you have available to distribute um, to the community agencies so the week before that was our intention my, my only point there is for Commissioner Holland's benefit is that you may not want to do too much due diligence upon receipt of the initial spreadsheet of what is asked mm -hmm. until you are <laughs> given a projected figure available for allocation. Mm -hmm. Thereby, you can decide what action may or may not be necessary on your part okay. as a matter of efficiency. I will quietly research. There you go. Up until I, then. Again, it just in the, for the sake of efficiency. Um, the, that's the sec there are two key components there what's requested and then what's potentially available for allocation and then we'll determine how much effort is necessary on your part to and investigate. is it possible certainly. to include what they at least received last year we would yeah and and the um, the other thing is is the the uh, you know we know we're going to have a presentation from planning and zoning uh, for example and that's an easy one to point to so we could move that to the to to a commission meeting like like it on the 12th, for example, a regular commission meeting, if, if you wanted to, to streamline that process a little bit and, well, and I, save the date of the 20th. I mean, you've got options is my point. Well, in my mind, how you want to do that. Those, those four, what I call joint agencies, those are kind of a given. So those in my mind are different from the others that we're talking about. So, but I would like to still see a presentation from those four. Right. Yeah, the, the four big ones are a given, but <laughs> the presentation is important to me because that sort of helps me gauge where I want to go with the contribution, the donation. Right, I still yeah. want to see them, yeah. but, but I think they yeah. are, maybe they yeah. should be included with themselves. a, um, 
some of the staff presentations even. Yeah. I so think I what did, you're getting at is you have an obligation, it's to some level to fund certain yeah, agencies, right. yeah. but mm -hmm. others is completely voluntary. Yes. Right. And, and, and Errol, I know this is your first rodeo, but really it's not your first rodeo, but you knew I was going to say something about 9 o'clock in the morning on all of them, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> if you want to move that time, that's subjective. I mean, it's a it's a calendar, and it's you know it's on paper here to talk from. Well, I left can, that community. You can show agency. up whenever you want. <laughs> What's that? What? You can show up whenever you want. Commissioner Atkins, did you prefer seven a.m.? Is the, that yeah, what that's you five. Prefer? He you want to bump that up eight. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> See, that's why I have so much respect for the city attorney. He always goes the wrong way, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's what Commissioner Crowley always used to do. Somebody <laughs> complained about eight. You said, "Okay, I'm here at seven. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking ten thirty, eleven o'clock myself. You know, I get to have my workout and my breakfast before I get here. Because uh, how long are the meetings? Do I clear off all day? Is it eight hours? Is it? Well, the, the <laughs> you, but you better plan on all day. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're going to want at least a couple of hours, a couple of hours. Um, a couple of six hours. Yeah. Two to, 12. Yeah. <laughs> Two to three. Can, and, can and we agree upon Kevin's ten, buying pizza every time? Ten to twelve. I think that's what he no, volunteers for pizza. Pizza. every There'll year. There'll be snacks. Ten to twelve. So if you want to start ten, that's ten. fine. I, we'll I note that. Ten myself, the, yeah. I listed the community agency presentation without because I didn't know what I do direction not you want to start to at go. ten o'clock. I'm just gonna say I don't want to start at ten o'clock. Who cares, huh? I don't mind. <laughs> Let's get in here at nine and get it over with. It's up to you guys. It doesn't bother me at all. I'll be here. Would we be time. done by three thirty? You think? Three yeah. thirty. Oh, really? okay. Yeah. Because that's yeah. when I probably would need we, to be done by. Now nah, we'll be done okay. by then. So yeah. we start at nine. We the earlier 10, we start, we, the earlier we get out. We start at 10, we're done by lunchtime. No. no. I like 10, but not if we're not going to get out by 3.30. Well, I, think, I think we get seven. out by 3.30. Oh, we, 10, 10, we could do 10 and, and manage around that. That's, okay. That sounds on, like Terry. two of you want that on, at Terry. least. I'm good for 10. and I I'm like not, to get our yeah. workout in yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So that, that's the majority. <laughs> is you want to go to spin class with me at 5.30 a.m.? No, nope. <laughs> my, my place don't open up that early. No. <laughs> okay, fine. Compromise. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock it is, and then okay. the the uh, we're anticipating having presentation of those four, and then we will determine the rest after that a, Are as you we get into for the all of these to be at ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was. Some of us have to work and get up and get going before ten o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I said I wasn't going to say anything, but I couldn't. So are we? Yet. Are we asking for all these to be at ten o'clock? I was, yes, ma'am. I, I would say that would consistency say. That okay. Would be bad. That'd be good. Are you all want to change the Wednesday to Thursday too? Keep it consistent? Not really. Yeah, the thirty-first of March, we put that on Wednesday. Because City Hall was closed a half day that Friday. So if y'all want to have that on Thursday, we'd be happy to do that too. Didn't you say that, was, that kind of pressed you all a bit? No, no. Well, I was just trying to make an extra day for those that worked uh, also and just trying to spread it out a little bit through that work week. I like Thursday. I cleared off Thursdays for three months. So. Okay, we'll move that to I Thursday. I did clear off fine. Wednesday. Thursday's okay, too. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> and well, that's right? the first. Yes. Yep. April. Is the location for that retreat at City Hall on the first? It, it, because of the way we televise things, yeah. Well, that's I mean, fine. They, I just wanted to know. Is it you. in here or downstairs? It would be here. Might, might as well. Okay. Yeah. So we'll publish a PDF to you folks tomorrow uh, sometime when we make some of the corrections and and uh, clean it up. So your note taking, you you don't have to get too extreme with that. We'll we'll send you a, a hard copy. And you you slipped one in here on uh, May that the one's 10th. One's on a Tuesday. Since we're changing, Tuesdays aren't really good for me. Tuesday. We can move that to the twenty second. <laughs> no problem. Is that a 10 a.m.? That would be at 10 a.m. as well. Mm -hmm. So move it to the what? The 22nd? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Aren't you glad you made this calendar, Earl? <laughs> I am. <laughs> you know, it's just work. It's a draft. 
Ashley Ashley did, did got started with it and then about threw her hands up at me. Is that a fair statement, Ashley? <laughs> I gave him suggestions. But. You, you did good. Except and for uh, no. going oh. back to the, the master plan discussion, I mean, we don't have to have extra meetings for that. If you just want to add it to some agendas for discussion in our regular meetings, or if the mayor wants to add that or whatever. I just want, I just want to make sure we get ample opportunity for the public. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't, in this day and age of COVID, I don't know how that's best. Well, you got one option. You, we, you do. Originally, we had intended to have public presentations of it at length, but with the requirements of COVID, we've not been able to do those broader outreaches. So we're, you know, we will we'll be pressed to try to to communicate outwardly the the items that are in the plan and communicate the overall plan. But in our website, we'll link that on Facebook, and that will be a start. And certainly, we'll have to do some some uh, outreach efforts to various organizations and continue that over time. But if there's something, you know, eventually simple kind of put together, the showroom worked great. It was like $200 for half a day. Um, if that would follow the rules, not sure. How well, and we can works there. Yeah, we can do uh, rotary. We can do some of those things too. And we need to do that. But those those types of things, like if you did a visit to Rotary or something, that would just kind of be a little presentation by you or the mayor and kind of just put it out there. Yep. Uh, Mr. Mr. Caulfield, what was the date for the Bluegrass Community Action Public Hearing? The 4th of March at 6.30 p.m. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anything else, sir? No, sir, that's all I have. We move right into the, uh, here's the public. I promise this is the public opportunity to uh, engage with the commission on any item that has not been on, and is not on tonight's agenda. <clears throat> Tom Poland said, please to each commissioner your hope for the use of Jenny Rogers for the best use to the community and the downtown master plan. That's all the comments we have. I think we're all with that. Yeah. Tell them we said thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Um, Mr. Comments. Mr. Atkins. Some upcoming uh, black history programs at Center College. Um, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, they have a, desert, a diversity dialogue. Uh, it's on Zoom. You have to register on Zoom. Um, it's at 7. Then I also have a downtown Danville meeting being sponsored by the Heart of Danville tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Then I have a Healing Communities <laughs> conversation tomorrow night at 6.30 on Zoom. Um, and then Center um, on Wednesday, this Wednesday the 24th at I think 7 o'clock again, uh, a live broadcast, uh, a dialogue with uh, Stacy Abrams, the former candidate for um, the governorship of Georgia, she's going to be talking about uh, voter registration and, and voter uh, voter registration and voter in, the, the, the voter enhancements, uh, and it's again a live program. Uh, her sister Andrew Abrams is going to be uh, facilitating. They're going to do a little Q and A about diversity and the last election and about voting rights. Those are things that have been sponsored by. Center College. I had that at eight. What time? Do you have it at seven? The one with Miss Abrams? It's at eight o'clock. That's the later time, right? Oh. Okay. On Wednesday yeah. night? Yeah. And then, um, get this right. Lunch with the Arts, 12 o'clock. Uh, uh, 
Our own Frank X. Walker. I think it's this Wednesday. This Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Uh, I had had a problem. I, yeah, you had a pre-register, and I had a problem with re registering, so if you have a problem registering, call them up, because uh, I got to return a call to them, because I couldn't get registered myself, but I wanted to let the public know of that. And then, uh, that's all for right now, I guess. Ms. Holland? Um, just, uh, I'm glad the community got through the ice storm all right um yes very few without long-term power outages and a big thank you to city and county road crews everybody uh was prepared and a big thank you to utility workers yes Ms. McCary? um i will echo that um as well as adding an extra shout out to our public works uh, I actually texted Earl the night that the weather was coming in and said, are we ready? <laughs> and he said, yes, I've spoken with the judge executive, Mike Wilder, and, you know, employee staff, all that. That's the way it's supposed to work. And that we have key people in management roles now. And I think it all went fairly seamlessly. And I also got uh, compliments from the public about the great job that they did. And I've also gotten um, a lot of uh, thank yous for the CARES money from some restaurants and gyms. So that, that helped a lot. Can I make a correction to Commissioner Terry's report? When uh, Earl and I talked, he told me he said, I'm on my knees praying. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I have anything different. Uh, I was going to also uh, thank Public Works and the, and the road crews and everybody else involved. Uh, as I understand, it was all hand, hands on deck, not just the road guys were involved. So appreciate the, uh, the teamwork there. And like somebody else said, it went about as well as a go-go-go, I think, considering. So. Yeah. Well, we're we lucky to, and we're appreciative. We need to make sure we thank the city clerk as well. I saw her out there with a shovel. Yeah, every time every time I called up and tried to get on the line, they said she was outside shoveling. So, uh -huh. but she was I here though. To. She was president well, accounted got. for. I saw the one too. <laughs> she was here. From, she was brought here. her own <laughs> shovel. She too. made it here every day. Huh? She absolutely. Yeah, did. she was here. That's right. Yep. Yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> The county attorney and I have had several conversations about it. Unfortunately, he had been uh, sidelined with some quarantining, and we <laughs> hope to have that finalized this week. I, I just thought of the other one I wanted to share, and that was a shout out to our own police chief, Chief Gray. Uh, chief Gray put a call out that he was willing to, to come by, pick people up, take them shopping, or go shopping for groceries. All right. You know, he was just he was just wanted to be a, a a taxi cab service for groceries and appointments and for whatever. And I thought that was really neat. Um, I didn't see it on Facebook, but someone just said, "Did you hear what your police chief just did?" But I did get a message about that, so I thought that's pretty neat too. A lot of people were trying to help. I forgot to. I, one of the things I wanted to mention is, and I appreciate you bringing it up. We, as far as the CARES Act, the the 
CARES grant program, we, we have uh, distributed all but one uh, of, of the potential allocations that, wow. uh, or we have an application for all but one, which is significant. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So those, those, that fund will be zeroed out wow. in the next few days. Wow. That's, that's, that's great. Second. <laughs> Any additions, corrections? Um, if I might add one more thing, uh, Commissioner Holland, um, to your motion, uh, and that would be approval of the bills totaling two hundred twenty-nine thousand five hundred fifty-four dollars and sixty cents. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Anything further? You know, all in favor say aye. 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 Item 10 is the resolution number 20.1. 20.1-02-22-01. This is the uh, bid award for the Terrible Road Elevated Tank Inspection. Mark. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioners, um, this is in regards to, uh, I spoke a few weeks ago about uh, the elevated tank uh, on Perville Road. Um, so what this, what this is in regards to is um, steel inspection and observation uh, during uh, the construction of the, of the elevated tank. It's a 750,000 gallon elevated water tank uh, as, well, as well as uh, painting and coating, which Obviously, anytime you have water uh, in contact with steel, you have some corrosive properties there. So it's it's imperative that the painting and the preparation of that of that metal is is inspected properly. And there's a lot of thought and process that goes into that. So having qualified personnel to oversee that on behalf of the city of Danville is certainly uh, imperative, uh, especially for something as as worthy of an investment as a as a new water tank. Uh, so that being said, you know um, it's been many, many years since a new tank has been constructed in the city of Danville. So this is a ground up inspection and, and certification. So this is uh, pretty important. Um, this one thing to note, um, it, they was broken out in a few, uh, a few tasks and I'll just break them down for you here uh, just real briefly. Uh, inclusion of uh, progress oversight, technical interpretations, uh, items such as uh, reviewing correspondence on behalf of the owner, uh, reviewing, uh, Visitation the fabric uh, uh, fabrication plant uh, on a daily basis, uh, overseeing the field direction of, of the of the elevated tank, um, and then surface painting and inspection and items such as that. And then it also included um, a two-year warranty inspection on behalf of the of the owner. So that was that was certainly uh, worthy of of inclusion. Um, and you know, there's other items that they included in their proposal. Um, surface preparation, coating and mixing, where they actually observe uh, the preparation of the paint and preparation of the materials uh, in, the, in the metals before it goes on, um, and items of that nature. So long story short, uh, it, was a, it was a good proposal. It was the only one that we received. The, the closing of the, uh, of the application process closed on February 4th. We received one proposal. But that being said, these folks uh, with this particular company um, it's a it's a it's a rotation of three people, and they mentioned their proposal. They have 60 plus years of experience combined, so yeah. a lot of good experience uh, built into this contract. Um, and also, um, there was some overlap of services uh, that we already had under uh, our design consultant. So I, I reached out to the owner of this company earlier today and discussed some of those items that maybe we could reduce out of their contract to try to get uh, that. I believe it's listed as 45,000 in the resolution. Uh, in their proposal, they call for uh, 42. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I discussed it a little bit with the with the owner of the company, and they agreed to, to knock that down to about 35,000. So we ended up saving maybe some money in the front end. But either way, it was it's certainly money well spent on something 
something that's as important as this. So, do we hear a motion for the resolution? I uh, move. Thank you, Mr. No. Atkins. Is second. I'll second. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner you Cottle. Uh, question. Yes. Sir. Uh, it says not to exceed forty-two thousand dollars. Then it says not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Is there a correction in there or what? Uh, in the proposal, it calls for 42. I believe in the, in the in the resolution, it shows 45. That would have just been a error on my part. Oh, okay. So it can All be right. reduced just, to the 42,000. Well, it should be reduced to the 30. Now 35. Yeah, 35,000. Exactly. Okay. So if you'd amend your motion to simply have the resolution reflect uh, an amount not to exceed 35,000. So moved. And sir, I didn't see the 45 until it got just now. But okay, so down to 35. Okay. Yes, sir. So moved. Let's have a better. motion and a second. Sorry. Any further discussion? I, I just have a quick question. Um, so this is preemptively for construction. This starts. is for the the in, for the inspection of the construction work that will be ongoing. Um, is that's what this is? Okay. It's for the in, the erection and the uh, inspection of the the paintings applications. We intentionally pull this from the HDR contract. They, the HDR is still responsible for resident inspection, including the pump station and various items like that. This is a specialty trade. Mm -hmm. um, it is a specialty industry. The reason you have one consultant is you really only have one or two in the region that does this type of work. If you contract it with a consulting firm, you're gonna end up getting a subcontract with a couple of these folks. So we fill that out of the HDR contract initially and include that with. Has construction our, actually started? That was the next question, what I was gonna ask Marshall to do. I think y'all had a project meeting this morning. Can you yeah. give us an idea? I understand there's a lot of things going on in the background, significant shop drawings, et cetera. But when can the general public, we've talked about this for a while, when can the general public expect to see equipment on top of the hill? We've torn the building down. Yeah, there's equipment out there right now. Yeah. Um, okay. So with the weather, they've kind of had a stall over the past week, of course. Uh, but there is there is construction equipment out there right now, sitting on top of the hill behind the house on Tuggle Road. Uh, the building, there was a garage up there that's been demoed. Uh, so some of the infrastructure that was up there on the hill is already gone. Uh, so we're waiting on a break in the weather uh, to pick back up. Okay. So. And is this a is this going to look like a typical water tower? It's going to look like your fourth street uh, yeah. tower. Okay. It's 150 feet, I think, tall. So it's a pretty okay. substantial water tower. Is that the one that says Atkins on it? <laughs> Any further questions or comments? Maybe See another it? job I wouldn't want is painting the inside of a water, no. water tower. Mm. Yeah. I'd rather do so. that than paint the outside. I, I, I agree with the mayor Either on that way. one. <laughs> yeah, just leave me out of the Either. whole thing. I'm good. Either way. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 11 uh, is an engineering report. Thank you, Marshall. Engineering report from uh, our engineer. Mr. Morgan. We have the dynamic duo now, don't we? <laughs> oh, here we go. And this is the first time I've used the projector as well, so we might see if things go seamlessly here. I, you have this in your packet. If you have any questions, just stop me. I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick. Um, First thing I'm going to go over is kind of general public services work that we have are doing. Let's see if we can get this to work. Which button do I use? The side. There we go. Okay. Uh, real quick before, if I didn't know if Marshall was going to leave or not, I want to give a special thanks to the utility guys for helping us during the uh, ice storm and snow events. They, which night did you all clear Main Street for us parking areas? Is that Tuesday night maybe? Yeah. Uh, I found Marshall t Wednesday morning, I think, bleary-eyed and <laughs> quite tired from a full night out. Uh, but they, they, were, they were a big help to us. You I went mean, back and read your job description, didn't you? Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> 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 I 
thing right. <laughs> we had several folks doing that after last week. It was a big, it was a big week. I mean, they, the guys did, it, they worked really hard and they worked a long time. I mean, they were, they were, we were sleeping here. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not useful enough to have to do that for this kind of thing. But they were, they were sleeping here. They needed to be, you know, they needed to be nearby to be able to get out and work on things quickly. So it was, it was a big week. Uh, Yes, I mean they started. They they started a week and a half ago from now, um, and pretty much worked for for about nine days straight, uh, just just clearing snow and ice. So it was it was a big week. Um, salt supply status: We received a shipment today of 50 tons, so we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we had enough left over after last week that we could have we could have gone through one more storm event, uh, but now we're we're definitely in good shape, and the the outlook looks good for the weather for the next few weeks. So hopefully. Hopefully we're, we're in good shape for this year. We've got a lot more ordered. We've asked for a lot more. Uh, we're going to keep ordering until we fill the building back up. Um, this, was a, this was a tough event for us because the building was full going into it. And it's just those one storm after, the, after another, we just kept using, kept using. And it was, it was, we had to conserve towards the end. But I think our, our staff did a really good job with conserving it in a manner that when it, the time came to clear it out, we had the right amount to clear it out. And it, it went well. Um, this is all right. So then, moving on past the storm request work orders, where we have the new request program that that Nick showed you all a few weeks ago. Um, we've been getting requests on it. It's n not a lot. I mean, we we really want citizens to use it. That's a great resource for us. I try to get out and look around the city and see what needs repaired, but there's a there's a lot out there, and there's very few of us to look at it. So citizens see things, go on there and put it on there. It, you know, we it has worked really well for us so far as a, as you know, things have popped up on there that the guys have gone out and fixed. I mean, just immediately. So it's it's been useful for us. We they also have a work work order internal work order system that's also part of that that we have begun to use. We just got we just went live on that a couple of weeks ago, um, and we're and then the ice storm hit. So we're 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 still getting the hang of that as a, as a group. We've kind of today started setting up weekly meetings of those of us that are working on it. To, to, to get together and review what we have on the request and work order system to keep that moving along. Uh, public services, garage renovations. Marilla, our co contractor next door on the Central Fire Station, is putting together a proposal to, for us to do the office renovations. And I, I've been actually expecting that this week when they indicated that we'd have it this week at our progress meeting for the fire station last week. So that we're looking for that. Um, Central Fire Station project. It's, this just gives you the general numbers of where we're at with construction, current, the current budget, how much we've, ex the current expenditures, uh, the current substantial completion date, which will change. Um, we're still waiting on the, the uh, construction schedule impact of the tunnel. Uh, we, we held off, I didn't, we didn't include that in the initial change order paperwork for that because they needed to do a lot of legwork to figure that, that impact out and we didn't want them to have to do that unless we knew we were moving forward with the change order and you all approved that so they're working on that schedule impact uh, other potential issues that should be upcoming we're going to get a change order request for weather days um, they were pretty well shut down for a couple of weeks uh, we'll see a change order in the next few weeks for foundation bearing soil amendments they've had to they hit the, the cistern that they had to fill they've had some voids it's We've, we've run into some karst geology next door, uh, kind of voids in the stone, in the in the bedrock that we're having to fill with lean concrete uh, to be able to, to bear the foundations on them. That's that's something we weren't anticipating, but everybody's gotten together and put their heads together and come up with a plan, and it 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 will be a reasonable change order, I believe. And then we have the existing city hall sewer force main. You you may see it out beside City Hall or the other side of the police station. Um, we were not aware that it was over there, but we, they found it when they were excavating and it's temporarily running that, uh, along, this, along the side of their excavation. Um, we will have to, there will be a, a we'll, we'll have to temporarily uh, relocate that in a way that they can start working over there and then they'll, they'll have to, to, to reinstall it below the plaza between the buildings. Uh, so we'll have a change order for that that will be forthcoming. Um, so, so that's all I had on the Central Fire Station. Any other questions about it? Walker Hall Demolition Project. Um, you see the numbers there, where we are with the budget and expenditures. 
uh, their contractual substantial completion date is March 5th. I think they'll meet that date. Um, they're going to start removing foundations tomorrow. And I think we'll know more then if that, that date is, is going to be okay. They could ask us for weather delays. They were, they were shut down for about two weeks as well. Uh, but they're, at this point, we think they'll be done within their contractual date. So they're, they're not asking for that now. Uh, if, they, if they run into issues with the foundation, we may come back with a change order for weather delays. Uh, streetscape. We have begun working with Gresham Smith on the streetscape design for Main, for Main Street. Oh, I'm skipping over. Go back up to the fourth and main signal replacement. Met with uh, KYTC and our consultant, QK4, about that project last week or the week before. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, we went over the permit process, where we were with it. The, the first step that we have right now is relocating the, the utility lines, the overhead utility lines. Two of the utility lines have been relocated. If you'll notice, two AT&T lines look odd because they kind of ramp up as they go across the intersection. The rest of the lines have not been relocated. We're still waiting on that. But our utility companies are very busy right now. So I think this can, this can wait a little bit while they get the power back to everyone. And, um, but I, we're, we're still all going with the permit process. This is, gonna, this is gonna take some time. I'm not sure when this will actually happen, but I'm pushing it as hard as I can. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts to it that I'm trying to, to keep going. There is an example of the potential pole and an arm for the signal that QK4 is, is putting in the permit application. It's kind of hard to see in that picture. It's a little, little dark, but um, it's, a, it's a pole that, we, that we're trying to match our the street light poles that we put on our new streetscape sections um, as closely as we can. And then like I was saying, the Main Street streetscape design, we've started those, those we've started that design. We've, have a, we've had a few meetings so far with our consultant, Gresham Smith. The next big step for us, for us, our stakeholder meetings, uh, we're trying to, to do those in March, middle of March is kind of the target at this point. I'm going to get out and start meeting with businesses, we're just walking down Main Street and talking to folks about how the best way to handle that, those stakeholder meetings, because we want to meet with businesses and property owners that are going to be impacted by the project. Uh, then we, we then we want to have a, so uh, we're going to try to do a virtual, maybe hybrid virtual, some way we can get stakeholder input on the design. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we get everyone's input that's going to be impacted. That way we, we have a good product for them once we move forward with, with the design into further development. We're trying to have a initial construction estimate from them in March that we can discuss in the budget process. Wayfinding signage. Uh, not much to talk about here. I, had, I have a permit meeting with KYTC scheduled for March 4th with our consultant involved as well. Um, and uh, as same as, as with Streetscape, I hope to have some kind of budget in March, some kind of estimate in March for the budget process. Uh, really nail down what these signs are gonna cost and how we wanna phase it in. There's, there's a lot there that we wanna discuss with you all on how we wanna move forward with this. Uh, solid waste collection contract. Actually, uh, update on this, we, we will be advertising for bids in the newspaper this Saturday for this contract. Uh, bids are, I think bids are going to be due March 30th, I believe is what we put in the, the, the proposals, request for proposals. Um, it's going to look very similar to the, the, how we bid the project out 10 years ago, which was a, you know, base bid for refuse collection and disposal with add, add alternates for universal re recycling collection and then a, another add alternate for voluntary recycling collection and then um, we'll you know, leave, kind of bring that to you all with a re recommendation for how to move forward with it. Stormwater program. Um, actually I actually have a meeting this week with uh, Strand Associates who was our consultant on the, the uh, I think it was sub-basin sub -basin A and B uh, design that was done a few years ago. That, that, that kind of I think needs to be re-energized, so I'm going to meet with them later this week. Um, the first phase of construction that really came out of that design and, and feasibility study was that what you see project area one in Streamland, uh, which is kind of re redoing some, uh, some vegetated swales that flowed through that, through that neighborhood. 
uh, to to reduce flooding. Um, so we were gonna we we're gonna move forward on that design with them. And then another thing that I'll, I'll be looking to do in this next coming fiscal year will be updating our stormwater manual that was done in 2006. So it's been 15 years. The state MS4 stormwater permit that we have has been updated multiple times since then. It really, it, it, for compliance, it needs to be updated. And we, we, I need to get that moving uh, to show this, this division of water that we are in the process of updating that. So that's something we'll talk about in the budget process. And then the next kind of sub-basin that, that I'm gonna recommend that we move to, you know, with uh, maybe a feasibility study next fiscal year would be sub-basin F. We're having some real, real serious issues on the major drainage system that flows between Swope and, and Sixth Street, uh, just north of Lexington. We're, uh, we have, I'm, we, I think we have a pipe collapse that we are, we are urgently repairing but it's just gonna be a patch in the grand scheme of things. We need to move forward with a, a more thorough review of that area. Those pipes are all undersized. And unless we do a major project to get them appropriately sized, we'll continue to have issues with, with clogging in, in, in different areas. It's, we're, gonna, we're gonna patch what has what collapsed now, but all that pipe is old clay pipe that has been in there many, many years that uh, is very vulnerable to failure. Um, so that's, that's an update on our stormwater program. Trail system, uh, we have encroachment permits at KYTC for crosswalks at Stanford Road and Lebanon Road. Um, I spoke to KYTC about this a couple weeks ago. They didn't really have an update. They said they were working on them. Uh, you know, the one at Stanford Road is needed pretty urgently. We have active trails connecting across Stanford Road now. Uh, and it's not, you know, we need to make that crossing as safe as possible for people that are using those trails. Lebanon Road is more of a long term, you know, we. I put upcoming potential projects that, you know, connecting the mountain bike park to the, the trails that are developing out by corporate drive is kind of a, a, a goal that we see as, as kind of the best way to, to maximize what we have currently. Um, and that also included upcoming, upcoming potential projects is, the, is in mountain bike park expansion to the north side of Clark's Run. We're in, currently we're on the south side. We, we're looking at another maybe mile, mile of, of mountain bike trail on the north side. Uh, so we're, I'm working with the uh, trail builder now to come up with an estimate for that work to bring to you all. Cemeteries, our new cemetery supervisor has started and we were, we were joking about uh, job descriptions. He, he spent the first week plowing snow. Uh, I don't think he was planning <laughs> on to, doing that his first week as cemetery supervisor, but we told him it's, it's not always like that. So he actually got to spend some time in the cemetery today, I think, for the first time and uh, yeah. start, start picking up limbs. Uh, so, Cause that's what we, our biggest issue is there right now. Uh, we're, uh, urgently for me is working on getting that property that was purchased on North First Street ready for expansion. Uh, we need to figure out the drainage. I've talked with Earl about that. And we've got to got a plan to figure that out. Um, and then we'll get that ready. Um, and then one of the things we'll ask in the budget, to, if possibly, if this is something you all want to fund, is start designing committal shelters for our cemeteries. Uh, you know, that's in the that's the kind of the urgent thing that was in the cemeteries master plan, and you know that's that's a th the first big item that needs to be funded. So, uh, new connector roads. The uh, request for qualification for design teams has been advertised by KYTC. I actually got a phone call from another firm today they're they're looking for information about it so that is moving forward with KYTC I, I've I've emailed with with the transportation cabinet and made sure that we are going to be part of their project team meaning that you know they when they select they'll bring us in for the pre-design meeting and, and I you know we, we've told them we want to be a part of that design process all the way through we want to have a say in and the how that road looks for our city it's going to be a very important part of our town so it needs to be you know we need to have input we we don't want to KYTC to design, design that in a vacuum without us. Um, and then we've met with representatives, the Southern Connector Road, we've met with representatives at Norfolk Southern. Uh, Marshall and I have a meeting scheduled later this week with them again to, to make sure that keeps moving forward. Um, you know, we, we, we've talked about a possible request for proposal for design this spring if we have funding for the next year's budget. Uh, I know I'm saying a lot of things getting funded in next year's budget, but 
you know, we're, we're, we want to get some of these things moving forward and we'll, you know, we'll need to, this will be more of a feasibility study, I think, at first. Earl, is that probably a, a good way to identify it? I mean. Yeah, what we'd like to do is uh, decide how much it's going to take to design uh, a center line that is uh, correct and done, like, like a primary center line alignment. And then um, west of the railroad, provide a more detailed final design. And so we're gonna, we're gonna see what that would cost. And then we will talk about that during the budget process so that that could be funded potentially locally. And that would speed up ultimately uh, the construct, the acquisition of construction dollars if it was fully funded. Uh, it certainly, it would make us more reactive if we have a potential development or, or a potential client that desires to locate in Danville on, on those properties in that area. Certainly, we would be more mobile and ready to act uh, to that. So, um, we're going to try to get to a number and, and discuss that during the capital uh, discussion during the uh, budget process. And then some just some upcoming miscellaneous projects you'll see us around town working on the parking garage we have some issues there we were trying to repair uh we we're going to remove and and then reinstall the parapet wall capstones so you'll see that happening in the corner i guess it would be the southeast corner on walnut is where we'll be doing those repairs uh that's that's imminent um the elevator tile replacement, they're going to, you know, that's, that's another project that staff is going to do in-house. And that, that should be, you know, I think once the weather clears up and we're done recovering from the storms, I think something we're going to work on. We're going to, we're going to be doing that work on the weekend, especially with the, the vaccinations happening. Um, we're, going to, we're going to make sure we're not, you know, shutting down the elevator during, during the day when people are needing it. And then we we have some issue with moisture and rainfall getting in the elevator stairwell shaft. Um, so we're I, I'm I'm starting to kind of work with consultants to brainstorm an idea to prevent rainfall from getting in. It's that faces west, so it, it's it's you know it it we need to do something there. It's, you know that over time has have a problem that has made itself apparent. And then sidewalks we we. We received a $3,000 KLC grant. It's a matching grant to do more of the trip hazard repairs that has been, have been done in previous years. So we, we have more money than that in the budget. We have more than $3,000 in the budget. So we will, we will definitely use the 3000s to get the match. And then we will continue with what we have in the budget to make further repairs uh, this year. That's, that, that should happen this spring when the weather breaks. So, and that's all I had. Do you all have any questions? Uh, I'm sure we're about to get a lot of requests about potholes. Yes. Yeah. So can you uh, just explain a little bit about how some of our streets are state streets and roads? Yes. Um, if, if they have a number, they're a state road. So if it's a street that has a number, that's, that's one good designation. We used to say if they had a double yellow line, they were a state road, but I think we have some now. We've, we've striped some city streets, <laughs> so uh, we can't say that anymore. But if it's if it's it, but go ahead and let us know you know we have contacts we can get with the state we'll call the mm -hmm. state we'll you know put put the request in that you know we can we can take that step for people so they don't have to dig through and try to find the state's number if it's easier for them to call us and let us know that's not a problem um i, I don't know i can't i can't ensure how responsive they'll be but we will you know we will do our best to let them know well just so you know we do have to pass those along yep. to the state but but while we get the requests and complaints it's and it's tough this time of year because we're just using cold patch asphalt so right. it's not going to stay right. we can right. patch and it's going to come come out again uh but we'll just keep we'll keep after we had a fairly large cut on stanford avenue uh, in front of bait that we are we are trying to to keep an eye on and, and keep repairing and and keep full of gravel because it happened in in the what, thursday maybe wednesday thursday um which is a, a pretty big deal during that storm event. Mm -hmm. and, but we're, we're keeping an eye on it. We're trying to keep it repaired. But yes, we are aware there are gonna be a lot of potholes after last week. Um, so just if, if people find them, put, put a request in on the system, call us, let us know about it, and we will, we will do our best, best to get to it. Thank jo you. Josh, what else, can, what else can we do to get the word out about the C-click and, and fix? <laughs> uh, 
you know, I don't know. I mean, that's not that's not really my specialty is public public outreach. But I think there's things we could do. I, th I think we we could probably push out some more press releases just just here and there, you know, over time, and not let it not not let people forget about it. Um, Marshall can do something on the water bills too. We need to Marshall put a note on the uh, text box on the water bills. We can add add a comment about that. I think you're limited in how many words, but we need to do that. That would be one opportunity that we've not done yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's yeah. it. Would be a great problem for us to have if there was too many requests for us yes, to fix. That's right. yeah. Yeah. That would be a good problem right. to have, right? Because that okay. you know that yeah. we we need to know those. We need to know yeah. that they need Absolutely. fixed. Um, could you could you send the five of us just a little snippet, something we might put on our social media pages? Yeah, that would help with that. Yes, we could do that. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, like Mr. Walter said about the other. It's up to us to sort of spread right. the word too. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've 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 got it functional now. We've got a plan in house and how to deal with it, and I think it's functioned. So now definitely it's time to really start yeah. start trying to push it. We did an initial yeah. rollout. We had some uh, downloads. We've had some notices come through. Those are being processed. So everything's functioning correctly. So it's we're we're ready to go. I mean, no, the good no. thing for us is we, we can we can collect data about what we're actually repairing if we put these mm -hmm. in into the request system. So that you know, when we start formulating budget, it's probably too late for me to do it this year with this with this budget. But next year, you know, we'll be able to say, hey, we we are we are struggling to keep up in this area. So we yeah. need to focus on funding for this area, or we you know we're we're on top of this. We can you know we can pull back a little bit. So there's there's some outcome things that we can provide to you all with with that data. That we we couldn't before. The, the Walker Hall uh, demolition. Uh, first time in ten years, I got a call from two ladies that said uh, they, they 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 took it down too quickly. So we saw them working on it. We went home and got our cameras and stuff and came back, and our classroom was gone. Yeah. <laughs> it was fast. It was fast. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's demolition crews. That's that's how they make their money is by being oh, fast. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they well, don't take their the time. Yeah. You started knocking that thing down. It's been sitting there for a while, but it went true. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I almost didn't get down there in time to see it because they were working so fast. And, yeah, and um, I also want to comment that it was very clean. Yeah. Like, for the most yeah. part, you know, it was a demo site, but there wasn't stuff everywhere. Yeah, they've done a, they've done a good job. They with did a the really good job. Maintaining give, credit, the site. give credit to them, but give credit to Morelia too, because they've dealt with a nasty situation next door. Yes. Everything they've got, Clay, they've done a really good job of wor working off their gra gravel that they have on the <laughs> west side going into the property. Mm -hmm. And and we've sat there and, and observed, and they, they've, done, they've done a really good job in trying to keep Main Street clean mm -hmm. in a very difficult situation, especially with the rain we've had. Oh, yeah. Swimming All right. <clears throat> Keep seat, Mr. Morgan. We got yep. four resolutions, and we would appreciate if you would expedite those. Item 12 is resolution number 2021-02-22-02. This is a playground grant acceptance. So yes, we we have currently we have two hundred thousand dollars budgeted. Uh, for an ADA playground. Uh, that was to be funded by a land and water conservation grant, but those don't appear to be going to be awarded soon. Um, and then we were approached with a possibility of a 50-50 matching grant from Little Tykes for one mm -hmm. of their playgrounds. Uh, you included a picture in mm -hmm. your all's packets yeah. of the one that we would, would like to move forward with. It's a, it, the cost of the playground is $103,500. Uh, which they would match 50-50 with us, so the city would just be responsible for $51,750. Along with that, I got a quote from the vendor to do all of the additional work that would be necessary, the removal of the old playground, the installation of the new playground, the installation of the, the, the border, the mulch, and then the installation of the existing playground at another location, along with the border and the mulch. So that brings us to a total project cost for the city of $94,882.40. Um, that number is not concrete, but it's it's pretty close. Um, so that's what the impact to the budget would be. That would leave us over $100,000. If the Land and Water Conservation Grant did come through, we would have $100,000 still in the budget to move forward with something on that project. So do you hear a motion would, for that resolution? So moved. Second. Commissioner Atkin, Commissioner Terry, thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. It's a great project. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will note that Tozy, uh, what is it, Cozy Coop 
is made by the same Tykes, which is the best-selling car in America. Okay. What? You've got oh, kids. You've got two of yeah. them at least, oh, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. I own yeah. three. I own three of those. Do you? By the way, yes. You got two red and one pink. <laughs> yes, sir. Illegal pool? Well, okay. <laughs> I think I still got some in a pile behind my house. I think one of them's down in the well behind my house, as a matter of fact, to be honest. You only know that because you have a grandchild, right? What's that? You. You only know that because you have a grandchild, right? Ooh. Well, these were from the back in the day. Ah. We're, we're slowly sure losing our tempo here. <laughs> we had one? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> Item 13 is resolution number 2021-02-22-03. This is the mowing contract award. Continue, sir. Yes, we received bids on February 16th for the mowing contract. So we received one bid. Uh, it was Tuesday during the snowstorm. It was a tough day, but we needed to get this these bids awarded. We received one bid. It's Cutting Edge Lawn Service has been our vendor for this for, for several years, back when I was here before. Uh, their bid was $144,959.94. And they also included an alternate bid uh, of $34,560 to mow the rear approximately 35 acres of Millennium Park, which is pretty much the ball fields Ooh. back uh, the, to the north. Uh, we would recommend acceptance of the, the base bid and the alternate, um, and we would fund those. Um, the base bid would be funded out of public services, and the alternate would be funded out of the Millennium Park budget. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020-02-2203. Second. Motion is made by Commissioner Holland, second by Commissioner Cottle. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, Bose like contract. Um, like, yeah, whatever. Are you delirious? I'm sitting here reading the next one. Uh, resolution number 2021-02-22-04. This is the beautification contract bid award. Continue, sir. Yes, we received bids uh, also on February 16th for the beautification contract. Um, we received only one bid on this as well from Divine Creations, who's been our vendor for several years for this contract, and their bid was uh, $78,885, and we would recommend award of that bid. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Terry. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Atkins, discussion? I have a question. Um, do they ever consider, like, doing perennials as part of the... We do have some perennials, I, I, you know. I, to not have to replace every year? The beautification committee has talked about uh, all kinds of those opportunities where uh, available. Uh, and they, there was two years ago, they tried to transition a big chunk of those to um, a, as an alternative. And, and I know that's something they think about every year. And so certainly Josh uh, will, yeah. he'll be participating with the beautification mm -hmm. committee and that'll be something that will, the decision on the flowers is, is about six months ago, to be honest with you. Um, we have to order those, they're greenhoused. Um, and so the order is made actually months ago for the actual flowers. Yeah. So this will be a decision he makes in September of this year, this coming year. Well, I'm glad it's always looked at, or just yeah. partially, not all. I think, I think it's tough to do the perennials because of, the, of where they're at. I think the a year That's round, true. it's just a tough environment. A right. lot of places, those medians right. for something to survive year round. I think the places we have done perennials, if we've done shrubs or anything small, they, they just, they struggle after a certain amount of years. It's just, a, it's tough. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's something that we would look at it. Like I'll have the, uh, I don't, I, I think I was talked to Erica today and I think we'll have the bid in two weeks for the flowers themselves to award, uh, which is actually, I think the bid was done in December, I think, or November, December. Uh, before I was here, but we'll have that as well. And that's something we can we can start looking further into that just as a cost and also just from a management standpoint. Yep. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, signify, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries. Item 15 is resolution number 2021-02-22-05. Cemetery maintenance bid award. Continue, sir. Yes, we received bids on February 16th as well for, for the cemetery maintenance contract. We received only one bid from Cutting Edge Lawn Service uh, in the amount of $87,000. Cutting Edge has been our vendor for several years at this 
uh, with this contract as well, and we would recommend award of the contract. Do we hear a motion? So moved. Commissioner Atkins, second. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, item 16 is resolution number 2021-02-22-06. This is an engagement letter with Sturgill Turner as our attorneys, Mr. Coffey. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. As described before, there there is a conflict and we have uh, sought an alternative for uh, legal representation in the matter described. You have in front of you resolution 20 2102-2206, which authorizes the staff and the city to utilize uh, Sturgill, Turner, Baker, and Maloney for representation on that matter. Do we hear a motion? So moved. Commissioner Atkins again, thank you. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Cottle. Any further discussion? When do we think this will be back on the agenda? Any idea? We will get with him, and this will be a special called meeting. And so we'll try to do that. We'll get with him this week. We'll know probably within the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll try to set a date and, and get okay. that moving for us. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Before we go any further, I want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Morgan, who has been here even less time than our HR Director Randy Boyd, and, and you, have, you have done a great job in a trying period, I might ask, mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, getting your arms around a number of items in the city. So uh, this is a good team. Well, he had a little bit of experience from before. <laughs> I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. All right, Councilor Dexter, on what grounds do we have need for an executive session? Mayor, before we discuss that, I do have one more item um, under the legal section for you. There's an agenda, or excuse me, a resolution that was placed on your desk, um, resolution number 2021-222, uh, we'll call it 07. And it is a declaration, a resolution declaring the state of emergency for the ice storm, winter storm event that occurred on February the 11th. It has been requested by the emergency management director that the city pass such a designation so as to make available potential funds for reimbursement um, from FEMA if they become available and depending on the, the cost associated with management of that ice storm. Wow. I move for approval of resolution 2021-02-2207. Thank you, Commissioner Cottles. Is there a second? Second. second. This says 20. We'll give it to Commissioner this Terry says, on that one. That'll be 20, fixed. 20. Okay. Excuse yeah. me. Thank you. Making sure you saw it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Mayor, it's my, it's my understanding that we have an executive session pursuant to the potential acquisition of real property and um, personnel. personnel. Do we have any litigation matters to no discuss? Problem. We'll say litigation just in case. <laughs> um, the big three. Yeah. That is quite a big three. <laughs> yes, it is. Do I hear a motion to that effect? I'll do. You want to do it? Okay. I'll make a motion to go into executive session for potential real estate property acquisition for which publicity at present stage might or would be likely to affect the value for KRS 61810B. And, and, <laughs> and also personnel. And also personnel. And also personnel pursuant to KRS. 61.8101F. And? And also litigation. 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 Potential oh. litigation. <laughs> and also litigation. Pending litigation. Pending litigation oh, pursuant to KRS 61.8101C. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Second. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Motion is made and seconded. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. 
And, and Commissioner Holland, you keep doing it that well, then you will find yourself doing it every time. <laughs> sitting there pointing at me, I was like, <laughs> okay, you work yourself into a job. Yeah, you work yourself.
your motion, we move back into regular session. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Carver, Mr. Terry. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. You're in regular session. Thank you. Staff is providing you the recommendation of rehiring Todd Davis to the position of police officer for the city of Danville. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Terry. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Todd. Thank you for the discussion. Continue on. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carries. Continue on, sir. That's all I have. Oh. Motion to adjourn. Motion has been made to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye and bye. We are adjourned.